Um, hi, so this is Arabian Nights. Any percent with dialogue? Now you might be wondering, why would you um, watch the dialogue in a speedrun? But it'll explain itself soon. Um, I saw a question in chat, how many days does this game have? I don't have a good answer for that. I don't know if there's any elephants. But if you're ready to go, um, then uh, we'll start. Make Ooh, sure I forgot to reset the timer. So yeah. Like, all right. All right. Get me in. Uh, three, two, one, go. Oh. We actually can skip that cutscene. Um, right from the start, I need to pick up a safety bomb uh, because I might need it. Uh, this is the tutorial level. I'm gonna run up here, which I don't really need to do, but there's a funny cutscene here, so I'm gonna do it anyway. So yeah, this is Arabian Nights in a nutshell. Um, we're gonna go back to where I just started. Um, and one of the main features of this game is that my health, what the heck, my health is low. Okay, so one of the main features of this game is that balls don't really, um, they are more of a suggestion than really something uh, you can't go through. So here I'm just gonna turn around and that makes me fall. When I hit the bottom of the level, I will spawn back at the top, and when I do so, I will actually pick up an item, or I could even uh, trigger a cutscene, but that's a very specific setup you have to do. And I'm just gonna walk up here and skip pretty much the entirety of this level. Um, right here, I need to backflip into this cutscene trigger, because if I don't, the game will crash. Um, this game is extremely stable, and I'm expecting it to crash at least once. But it's fine. So that's Melissa. Uh, the story of this game is basically um, the Sultan has five daughters, and if they, wow, if they turn 21 without being married, uh, they will basically get exiled, and uh, the Grand Vizier will take over. Now, spoilers: Grand Vizier, he knows they are always evil, and. Um, he's planning to kidnap all the five daughters and actually um, become the Sultan, which we want to prevent, of course. So here's Melissa again, and she's getting kidnapped now by the Sultan or the Vizier's lackeys. And yeah, this game is kind of like Prince of Persia. Uh, the funny thing is, in the year this game came out, uh, a Dreamcast port of Prince of Persia 3D came out with the subtitle Arabian Nights, which is really helpful because uh, some people might think you're talking about that game if you're talking about Arabian Nights. So in this cutscene, there's a boss, and we're gonna fight him soon. He is very fast and clever. The master will not be pleased if we fail. Go! I think I'm gonna heal just to be safe because uh, I took a fall in the first level, which I normally don't. Oh, that's. Oh, that's. This. Oh, no. <laughs> um, this is not intended. Oh, wow. Uh, he killed that other guy. Oh, uh, please. <laughs> Okay, we're good. Okay, so this is the boss. Uh, I'm in stealth mode right now, don't ask why, it's just there. Um, and if you go into stealth mode behind the boss, and he doesn't detect you, he instantly dies. My savior, here you are at last. Quickly, let's go back and see my father. You know, I'm protected by the good genie who created me, and no one can kiss me before marrying me. Should that happen, the good genie would immediately take me back to my father. Oh. <laughs> well then, give me a kiss, my pet. 
Then meet me at the palace. <laughs> Are you giggling? <laughs> yeah, so this is a feature of the game that I completely forgot about because normally I'm here at full health. Um, so I got damaged enough to the point where I have this animation where Ali is like, ah, because he's hurt and stuff. Um, and when that happens, the cutscenes, they actually render um, in engine. So in the cutscenes, he does his death animation. <laughs> and I'm going to see how far I can take it before actually having to heal. <laughs> because this is just great. This is pretty much what I was hoping would happen at some point. <laughs> um, also, that text file of life, it's gonna stay on screen for the entire run, so be prepared for that. It's even gonna stay on the screen um, if the game crashes and I reload the save, so yeah. Uh, like I said, this game was really well programmed. Now, in this level, uh, we're actually gonna have to do some uh, some puzzles. So we're picking up... Oh, 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 oh I'm getting bullied. Okay, I died. <laughs> um, so combat in this game is kind of difficult. It's really easy to get stunlocked and die. Um, but the main way to get out of that is just to uh, do a backflip. Uh, and... Well, I have to go uh, actually heal, because this is getting a bit tight. Um, but yeah, the main way to go about it is just uh, backflipping, and that'll usually save you. Okay, can I heal before getting killed? No! Oh god, I need to find a place to actually heal. <laughs> uh, but this is pretty much what I was hoping was gonna... Oh my god. So, pretty much all the marathon runs of this game haven't gone well. Uh, there's always something that, that just throws a spanner in the works. And that's kind of what's happening right now. I need to find a safe place to actually heal. Please be safe. Okay, I'm safe. Whew. So, as I was saying, um, this is one of the few levels where you actually have to kind of do intended things. Um, so we're picking up all these uh, puzzle pieces. And at the end of the um, level, there's like a wall where you, well, the, where you actually have to put in the puzzle pieces. And when you do so, you spawn a genie, which I'm not sure how that works, but it's fine. It's Arabian Nights. We're gonna jump down this snake pit, and I need to run to this wall and hope the snakes at the top don't um, come back here before I kill these snakes, because there's a weird thing about this game where the controls are super well made and there's like an auto-aim system um, and if those snakes actually come in too early uh, my fireball will aim at those snakes and I'm getting bullied to death. Uh oh. Uh, wow! Uh, so that's new. Um, <laughs> So normally the um, uh, enemies will actually <laughs> stop, <laughs> will stop attacking you as soon as a uh, cutscene starts uh, playing. But uh, yeah, I've never actually seen that happen before. Um, I'm not sure what to say about that. <laughs> Maybe I should actually kill those snakes. Um, that sounds like kind of a plan. Okay, it's only one snake this time. Okay, let's let's actually take care of it. <laughs> okay, please don't attack me in the cutscene again. Thank you for bringing me, my good friends. We shall meet again. <laughs> so that's the genie. Um, 
He's actually kind of relevant to the plot. Um, there's a bit of plot later on uh, that I'll probably explain when it's more appropriate, uh, but he's definitely involved in the events of this game. Right here, the geometry of the level is really well done, so if I uh, jump on the stairs there, uh, I hit like an invisible uh, hitbox, and I can just jump out of bounds right here. And that's something you're gonna see a lot in this game. Uh, this game is basically more out of bounds than in bounds. Um, <laughs> and especially one of the items we're gonna be picking up soon is actually gonna contribute to that as well. Here we're gonna just jump out of bounds again, and at some point we're gonna land inside uh, right next to the end of the level. Uh, and we're gonna pick up some items that really aren't too relevant. Uh, but you'll see those uh, soon. There we go, we landed in a pretty nice spot actually. We don't actually take falling damage here because I think we jumped off at a higher height than we actually landed, so I don't get fall damage. Also, that guy is sort of like a boss we, which we have to kill. Um, but again, we can just backstab him by going into stealth mode and he just dies in one hit. Right here, this wall is very solid, so we're just gonna jump through it. And at some point, I'm gonna pick up the flute. Now, the flute is very special because uh, if you use it, you can actually jump in midair. Oh, wow, where did I land? What is this place? Um, I'm just gonna continue jumping and hope for the best. Okay, I see where I need to go. We can just do it manually. So, the flute allows you to jump in midair. Uh, the way it works is you just use the flute and it seems to spawn a platform below you. And because of that you can just jump off of it again. Oh, I didn't die! Good! Uh, so this is uh, the second wife. We have to do a Simon Says type dancing game with her to um, break the spell that's flying around her head. And hopefully the next cutscene won't skip because it's one of the best in the game. But, who knows. The game does actually explain the inputs for this, but that's a really boring cutscene, so I skipped it. Quick. No, Jesus it's skipping! Father, so that he may unite us. No, stop it! Oh my god, uh, so that cutscene skipped again. Uh, I think it happened during my ESA run as well. Um, it's a really good cutscene because she's like, oh, who are you? Oh, hey, let's get married. Uh, dang it. Right here, I'm stuck on the stairs. Uh, stairs in this game are actually kind of lethal. And the funny thing is, it gives me cutscene control, which allows me to kill all the NPCs in this cutscene. He has numerous qualities, and I think that the five rewards that are promised will give him a great deal of energy. Perhaps you wish to say something, Grand Vizier? I simply wish <laughs> to point out to His Majesty that the sun was going to rise soon and that our Wagner seducer had only one day left to ease your most majestuous sorrow. Yes. Uh, thank you for bringing us back to the harsh reality, most precious Vizier. My other daughters are out of the palace. I feel it. Make haste, my son, and my future son. So you saw the Grand Vizier there, we killed him, so I guess the run is over. Nah, it, we actually have to do a lot of stuff still, but uh, yeah, you just get to kill NPCs in cutscenes if you get cutscene control. And the stairs in this are just super janky, so it's really easy to get it. So what you actually do is you just turn the mouse while Ali is walking and for some reason you still have a little bit of control in cutscenes. Uh, which doesn't really make sense, but it just happens. So in this level we're just gonna use flute jumps to actually get out, out of bounds. And right here we're just gonna clip through the floor and then fall down here and that actually enters the next level. This level is a really tight maze, so getting around all these paths is actually kind of annoying because it's actually really annoying to get around. And this is a really short level. Normally you're supposed to collect like some 
idols or something and go in here uh, and do something with them. But we're just gonna flute jump out of bounds and sit through the wall here. And that's the end of this level. So the next level is actually where we're gonna meet the uh, gardener. Um, hmm, do I do I reveal his role in this game? Nah, I'll uh, I'll wait for a second. Um, right there, there's actually an invisible ceiling, and it can be actually quite annoying to jump through it uh, with the flute uh, because you can't see it, so you don't really have an idea of. Uh, how far you're into the ceiling and to actually jump through ceilings you have to be a specific amount um, through its hitbox uh, with your uh, with your head which doesn't make sense but it's the way it is I'm the new apprentice I do seem awfully young for this profession lad it's just not like in the old days well, to start with, go get me some pear pips at the fruit garden. I need them for my experiments. The password is at the Akama Fate. Don't you seem awfully young for this profession, lad? <laughs> All the voice acting is really good in this game, but we haven't yet seen the best guy in this entire game. There's one coming up really soon that has the best voice acting in the game the most appropriate voice acting as well. But before we get there, we have to pick up this really heavy bucket. I don't know what it's made of, but you walk so slowly with it, it's ridiculous. Um, and we have to actually use it for a puzzle. Um, and I can't open doors uh, with the bucket in my hand. Uh, it's that heavy. Um, so I have to drop it. And it's kind of annoying because the doors actually close quite quickly, so, yeah. Oh, the uh, the password is uh, at the Akaba Feast Plant Hydrant Gears. Yeah. It's uh, easy. And um, we're coming up on the best NPC here. Password at the Akaba Feast Plant Hydrant Gears. Yeah, it's good. You can go. <laughs> totally appropriate Arabian accent. This uh, cutscene right here with the monkey eating a banana. Um, it doesn't actually end, so you actually have to manually skip it. Which is fantastic. Right here I need to actually kill this guard, because as soon as I start transporting water, uh, he'll actually attack me. So just to be safe, I just stealth kill him and it's fine. I'm not sure why it's a crime to transport water around, but for some reason it is. Uh, there's also an archer right in the tower there, and as soon as I put... Oh, he's already attacking, never mind. But yeah, we have to uh, carry water to these four jugs to open the gate. Uh, and we need to pick up some items in this level to uh, make a bouquet. Uh, because our next wife, uh, she won't... She won't marry us until we find her the most beautiful flowers in the world. Um, she um, Normally she's supposed to show up before you actually do all of this, but by the magic of flute jumping we actually don't see her, unfortunately. Uh, it, it's actually a pretty good cutscene that plays before the... But uh, yeah, unfortunately uh, we're not seeing that. Also, there's, there's some banana peels on the ground there. Um, I think the cutscene with the monkey is actually there to show why there's banana peels on the ground. And that's the only reason it's there. But yeah, this is just... Uh really slowly walking around to get to the gate. Also, just take note of how the gate opens in the next few cutscenes. Also, there's a spooky tiger. Which is, I guess it's kind of like uh, like a Dave. Does this count as a Dave? Chat, give me your opinion. Is this a Dave? I can't, I can't stop it. <laughs> So that's episode 4, I believe, already. Um, 
We're supposed to fight this tiger, but we don't have to. Also, I can control Ali with my mouse here, which is always amazing. Also, I like how Ali has to take out his sword while he also has his sword out already. <laughs> you can see this game was well made. Also, there's a pair on the ground that doesn't drop until you actually enter this level. Uh, just don't ask questions about this game because I don't have any answers. It's just the way it is. Here, Lord Garner, here are the tips. Oh, they're not very big. It's just not like in the olden days. Well, I don't smell too good round here. That's normal, kid. I'm trying to create the flower of a thousand cents. It doesn't work every time. Instead of hanging about like an old magpie, go get my hoe. It's in the chest, in the cops. Here's the key. Alright, so we have to actually do some stuff for the gardener to actually make the uh, flower of a thousand cents, but he's gonna be gone soon. Um, also, we're gonna open this chest from the backside, uh, because, you know, that's how you do... It's just a completely normal way of opening chests and picking up items. Right here we need to combine these um, ingredients to make the flower of a thousand cents. It's uh, it's a riddle in the game that I don't know how to solve, but I know the answer to it, so it's fine. And there's the plant of a thousand cents. Right here we're gonna... Well, this should be... No, I need to be a bit more... Yes. Alright, we're gonna jump out of the ceiling here. Um, so this level has a particular f uh, feature where if I press T, the game will start lagging. And the final uh, flower in the in the sequence for the bouquet actually starts spawning. Normally, you're supposed to do a really annoying puzzle with like a crank, uh, and you have to run all over the place. And the issue with that is that um, there's a bunch of scorpions, and if they actually attack you, uh, you'll get poisoned. And poison in this game is pretty much lethal. Unless you have an uh, antidote, or do something very specific, I believe. I'm not entirely sure on it, but I don't want to get poisoned, so I just skip the entirety of that puzzle. Um, and right here we're just gonna jump out again, and jump into the void until we hit this uh, like garden area with the uh, Sultan statue. Sometimes um, Ali actually plays the flute while uh, trying to flute jump. Uh, if that happens, you just quick save and he stops playing the flute, which is kind of nice. I need to pick up the cactus because that's actually part of the uh, bouquet. And right here I'm just gonna jump out uh, through the ceiling again. Now there's a weird thing about, um, about the save system in this game. If you, um, if you make a save and then immediately load it again, can I get through the ceiling? Um, so if you load it again, um, the order of item pickups or cutscene triggers you get when falling out of bounds actually changes. Um, and we're gonna abuse that. Because um, if we do that right here, um, we will actually skip right to the, uh, to the final cutscene of this level. Um, the moment we hit the bottom of the level, instead of falling like five times and potentially dying. You're wonderful. You are worthy of being my spouse. So that's wife number three. Um, yeah, she likes the flowers. By the Grand Vizier. In that case, you can go. You look a bit nervous at the moment. It's understandable. That lousy Black Moon sect is infiltrating everywhere. But just what is this sect? Hey, I'm no informer. <laughs> you want information? You've only got to go see the town guide. 
Alright, so this level used to be extremely long. Um, because you had to run around and find um, a specific person. But the funny thing is, if I just jump up here, uh, with the flute of course, and just fall out of bounds, that cutscene will actually trigger pretty much the moment we hit the bottom of the level. Um, <laughs> and that skips like one and a half minutes of just running around doing dumb stuff. Ah, finally. Armor the redhead. What can I do for you, Hunter? This is totally fine, the by the way. told me you could tell me about the Black Moon set. Ah, that Mustaf. What a blabbermouth. He's not the only one, though. The Tom Tom player. He's a talker, too. In bed. He's a former sect member. I think he could inform me. So that was Irma. You didn't really see her, uh, but she is, uh, uh, to put it mildly, a lady of the night. Um, the Arabian Nights, I guess. Um, and normally you're supposed to talk to like five different NPCs to actually find out that she's there, but we just skip all of that. Now this guy, we're gonna have a very fair fight with him. Uh, yes. Uh, so what I do is I throw a bomb at him. And uh, that'll actually trigger the fight that he's normally um, that you're normally supposed to trigger by talking to him. And uh oh, he's not cooperating. Um, uh, okay, I have to reload that. Um, normally you're supposed to actually talk to him and pay like 20 pieces of gold or something to actually fight with him, but. The bombs will actually aggro him, so he'll just start fighting you instead. Um, normally I'm supposed to do this in a way more consistent manner, but... Everything is uh, going really well, so... <laughs> right, that should hit him, yes. You were very lucky, but I keep my word. Take this weapon, and don't let me see you again! Yeah, I was very lucky that the bombs were actually super powerful at killing him. Uh, if you try to fight him normally with the sword, uh, yeah, good luck. Okay, I've never managed. <laughs> I know you're a former member of the Black Moon set. And don't waste my time, otherwise I'll denounce you to the Grand Vizier's guards. Oh, sure, not so loud. I was kicked out of this sect a long time ago for incompetence. What do you want with me? Show me the passage to the sewers. Okay, let's go. Now, the whole reason we actually pick up the sword is that the bongo player won't actually help us out if we don't. Um, so that's pretty much the reason we pick it up. Uh, the sword still is really shit, uh, so we don't really use it. Um, unless we can actually stealth kill something. Um, and that's really the best way to actually deal with bosses in this game. I'm gonna pick up the magic turban here. Uh, this serves pretty much no purpose for the run um, other than preventing a crash at the end uh, in the credits, uh, well the outro cutscenes I guess. And we're actually gonna watch those because they are pretty good. Um, but yeah, normally the turban is uh, supposed to um, increase the power of your... Um, well, no, it's... It allows you to cast uh, the, the... No, don't play the flute. Oh my god. Normally it's... Uh, it's gonna allow you to... What are you doing? Oh no, that's bad. <laughs> um, it, it allows you to cast the big fireball faster than normal. Uh, but since we don't actually pick up the ring to cast the fireball, I don't think that's really relevant for us. Um, and that guy drops the key conveniently to uh, the ending of this level, so we can just kill that one guy and go in here. Uh, hold on. I need to quick save and quick load here again, because that will do the uh, trick where it 
uh, changes the order of things around when we hit the bottom of the level again. So this level is like 15 seconds because of that. And then we enter this level. Uh, there's a boss fight coming up again, but um, this is one of the bosses where we can just, you know, flute jump behind him and uh, pretty much immediately kill him using stealth kills, um, which is pretty fantastic. I don't know how you're supposed to fight him normally, but I assume it's gonna take a long time because um, in the old route, before we found uh, stealth mode, um, you would actually use the charged up fireballs to actually kill him, but the problem with that is that it takes a long time to actually charge him up, even with uh, with the turban. Uh, so just uh, stealth killing this boss alone, I believe, saves somewhere around like one and a half minutes. It's actually insane. Hey, come on, that's enough. Open up. All my papers are in order. Are you a moron or what? You can't get out without a mount. <laughs> so we need to escape the city, um, but we can't do so without a mount, so we have to talk to this guide. And he's gonna ramble on about the history of the city. Um, the only problem is we have to talk to him twice, which is really annoying because this guy talks on and on and on. They were brought back by Nureddin III, the Magnificent, during the Egyptian campaign. They measured 10 meters high, and their transport necessitated more than 200 slaves and four, uh, 50 camels. It is said that on account of this journey, all the camels of the region have short legs. <laughs> but that is only a legend. I thank you for your attention. Even more so, because you are my 999th visitor. Come again! Um, so, because that guy talks way too long and I can't be bothered with it, I'm just gonna use the hottest speed tech to skip that cutscene again. Uh, you just turn down the volume for the dialogue and the sound effects and you skip the cutscene. Um, so the... Uh, the stealth mode, I actually found it in the manual, like, um, last year after I got this AGDQ run of this game, uh, and it completely broke the game. Uh, Glitchless is about seven and a half minutes shorter than with the dialogue. Well, no, not glitchless. Um, dialogueless, any percent, is seven and a half minutes shorter. I filled it up for the week. But stealth mode on its own already saves a lot of time. Also, the, the button to open this gate is on the outside of the city, which makes perfect sense. Uh, also, we got really good guard RNG there, because he walks like on a patrol path, and sometimes he's in a really bad spot and it takes like 5 seconds extra to open the gate. <laughs> Nepo. Nepo. Mate. Mate. Um, so the camel, I, I kinda talked over it, but uh, something happened when they transported those pillars you saw in the previous level, and that's why the camels have short legs, or something along those lines. Now, we're coming up uh, pretty much on the end of the game. So the gardener, which we saw earlier, is actually the brother of the current sultan. And the gardener found the magic lamp with uh, with the genie in it. And um, what happened is um, the sultan, the current sultan, actually stole the lamp from the gardener and uh, wished he was the sultan because. Originally, the gardener was supposed to become the sultan, and not the um, current sultan. But he stole the lamp, and that's why he's... There's a tiny ledge I can jump on here, let's see if I can find it. Um, but yeah, the, the current sultan really isn't supposed to be sultan. Uh, and that's why the gardener is actually in a plot with the grand vizier to... Um, take over the... Come on, Ali. 
to, to actually take over the uh, Sultanate. Um, so really, the if you, if you really want to question the morality behind this game, who is really the evil one? I think it's actually the current Sultan. Have you got an obsession or what? <laughs> From my point of view, the gardener is evil. <laughs> Well, why and is that? I'll have all the little princesses just to myself. I don't know. Change my mind. <laughs> mm, I think I'll just take a little stroll over to the merchants. You can never be too sure. All right, we're coming up on the Grand Vizier fight. Um, in practice, this uh, went really badly for me. <laughs> so let's see how it actually goes this time. Uh, so. We might get screwed over by stairs again, um, which is kind of annoying because it changes the positioning for the fight. Uh, and I need to throw knives at him, but if I'm stuck on the stairs, uh, I'll be far away enough that this guy can throw a spell at me. I find we see you much too often these days, and I just wonder if you're not the cause of our problems. In fact, you represent a threat to the kingdom, and that threat must disappear. We didn't get fucked over by stairs. Good. I can just throw knives at him and he's gonna die. <laughs> so in practice, uh, it took me like uh, 10 minutes uh, to actually uh, kill him. Um, because it was the first time I actually played the game in ages. And yeah, um, things went really well. Uh, we have to pick up the parrot seeds he drops because the end trigger for this um, for this level is actually talking to the parrot. And right here we're just gonna jump out of bounds again in roughly this direction, and we're gonna land close to the end of the level. Um, interesting. Okay, we can make this work. Uh, usually I don't really fall out of bounds right here, but this is fine. Uh, we can just jump out and go over here. Let's see. Alright, so there's a bookcase here. If I just drop like this, I just drop onto the bookcase through the wall. And then we get to pretty much where the end of the level is. Now for this uh, parrot thing, um, you want to stand on the right side of the cage. Because otherwise, you'll actually get stuck in the cutscene. And you actually softlock the game. And yeah, I did actually kill the uh, Grand Vizier, but that was actually his stand-in. So this is uh, the final level. Uh, you're supposed to fight the Gardener in this level. Um, but we're not gonna do so. Also, if you've uh, kept track of things, uh, the wife we saved in the level with the Medusa boss, uh, she was actually... Um, She's actually the last wife you save in this game, even though there's five wives. So we never see the fourth one, also that's time. And there's a cutscene coming up which we're gonna watch because it's really, really good. And there's the Sultan, who really is the one who should be killed, but hey, I'm a bit biased. As I have the same powers as the princesses, you must embrace me so that I can be beamed to the palace where I'll be with my daughters. They belong to you henceforth, and shall be your wives. And I appoint you, Grand Vizier, in place of he who failed at the task. Come on, just another little try, son. If that's not too much to order, Ah, that prick. I'll make up for it with my little beige. <laughs> <laughs> His face is so good. <laughs> so if I hadn't picked up the magic turban, the game would crash right here. So that's why I pick it up. Hey, you dark-haired stud. Come on, you big camel. Oh, my darling. Over oh, here. Oh, 
little treasure. Come on, you Come on, you Come on, you Over here, treasure. Ali, my darling. Ali, my darling. Ali, my darling. Ali. Over here. Come on, you big cat. Ali, my darling. Hey, you dark cat. Ali, my darling. Come on, you Ali. Come on, you Over here, treasure. Ali, my darling. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, Arabian Nights. <laughs> I hope you all uh, <laughs> enjoyed it. It's, uh, it's a very, very game, and yeah, it's just... Uh, yeah, I, I just enjoyed it a lot because of the cutscenes, and that's why I run any percent with the dialogues. <laughs> Thanks, Giz. Your yeah, time was 37.53. Oh, that's actually pretty decent given what actually happened during the run. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think world record for this category is like 35 minutes-ish. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, so that that's actually pretty decent given that a lot went wrong. So yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it was fun uh, doing the run again. It's been a while, but <laughs> That's all right. it's always fun. <laughs> <laughs>